Hey everybody, we're down here in the wardroom of Battleship Texas with Sarah, who's going to give us a little bit of information about the history of this room as well as this ship. I'm Trevzor, and this is Talking Ship. All right, we're back and we're down here in the wardroom with Sarah. Uh, there's this big bell right here. It says 1895 on it. And I was told that Battleship Texas was commissioned in 1914. This is USS Texas. What's going on here? So this is actually the bell from the first battleship USS Texas. Okay. So that ship was commissioned in 1895. Um, it was the precursor to this ship. The 1895 Texas, their major guns were two 12-inch guns. Um, and at the time, that was the first battleship in the US Navy. So that ship did mostly coastal defense on the eastern seaboard. Uh, she participated in a battle in, during the Spanish-American War in Cuba. And then by 1911, they knew, well, that ship, the ship's armament was no longer up to date. They okay. wanted, they were creating new class of ships, sure. um, dreadnought ships. And so what they decided to do was to rename the original Texas so they could reuse the name Texas. So the 1895 Texas became the USS San Marcos okay. in 1911. Shortly after that, the Navy decided to sink it, use it for battle practice. Great. Great, great use of a ship, right? Exactly. People were not happy about that. I can imagine. Yeah. So now, so at that point, we now have our Texas, as we're standing on right now, correct? Right. So this ship was then launched in 1912, commissioned in 1914. So this is the second battleship Texas. I get it. All right. And uh, you've told me earlier that we have some interesting artifacts mm -hmm. uh, along over here. Like you said, this is the silver from the original 1895 Texas, right? Right. Okay. So what is this used for? Like, it's super fancy, and we're on a big steel ship of war. What's... Why the silver? So it's incredibly fancy, and it's very ornate. Yes, um, it, we can notice. tell. There's um, all kinds of hand-painted, very, it's very, very intricate and detailed. If you look at the punch bowl, it's got the hand-painted Alamo on it. Yes, it um, does. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> if you, there's a lot of touches like that. If you look at the candelabra very closely, you can see a quote from Davy Crockett. Um, the quote is, be sure you're right, then go ahead, which is very classic Texas. Um, so this, basically this silver would have been used for ceremonial occasions for fancy dinners aboard the ship. Okay. So it was given by the people of Texas to the sh battleship Texas. Okay. So this is like when the captain has a guest, like a state honored guest on board. We want to, we want to pull out all the stops, maybe not use the metal trays, <laughs> use the, the good silverware to make everyone feel extra special, right? Potentially. Yes. But the, they would not. Officers would not have been using the metal trays. Yeah. Um, so they would have been using the nicer stuff anyway, just maybe not this nice. Oh, okay, I get you. And uh, so this didn't go through to Battleship Texas we're standing on right now. It, they got a whole new set, right? Yeah, so and actually so this, this set was given to this ship okay. um, in 1914. All right. So uh, in addition to this set, the 1914 set was also commissioned at the same time. So it's around here? Yes. Okay, let's check this out. And. Uh, I, I hate to say it because it's, it's cliched, but it feels like everything's bigger in 1914 Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, that punch bowl is gigantic. It's huge. So this also would have been used for ceremonial occasions, the 1914 set. Um, what you'll notice is everything looks much, it's still very fancy, but yes. it's not nearly as ornate as the 1895 set. Um, also something that's interesting is the candelabra here are actually wild for electricity. Really? Yes. So those are electric lights that you didn't want to do candles anymore they were at the point where they could run electricity ah. so they had the option of going either way that was very interesting and uh i i noticed here that everything has the the single star on it as opposed to the deep ornate carvings and and molding that the other one did is that that when texas battleship texas just said no we are lone star <laughs> texas this is us uh, to some degree. I mean, I think it was it keeps with the style of the time. So you do see you see the star for Texas. You see the Navy symbol. Yeah. You don't see near. You see if you look closely, you'll see some engravings of places from across the state. Okay. But you will not see anything as ornate as the 1895 set. All right. And I I hear that there's something special tucked away behind this gate, uh, a portrait of someone special for Battleship Texas. Yes. All so right. We'll just, Can we check that out? Sure. Check this out. go through here and Do you to, we can try and move the table it's pretty heavy I think we can just go for it right here You're cool. yeah, yeah. Okay. all right so uh, there's a portrait of a dog here he's <laughs> got it got its own light and everything tell me what 
Is yes. is this the the first admiral on Battleship Texas? That's, a, that's a good guess. Um, <laughs> it's not. This is actually Jim. Jim. Jim is one of the ship's most famous mascots. Okay. So, basically, in World War One, after World War One in 1919, there was a little boy named Lloyd Adams living in England. He was three years old. He was living near an area where there were some troops from New Zealand that were billeted. And when the troops left to go back home, they left their mascot, who's a dog. And so Lloyd's uncle was in the Royal Veterinary Corps and decided that he would bring the dog home to his family. So they tried to keep the dog as a pet. The dog was very sweet to Lloyd, but was very aggressive with other dogs. So okay. they and decided that the dog needed to go live somewhere else. So ultimately, Lloyd's dad started contacting the Royal Admiralty and asking, does any ship need a mascot? None of the British ships did, but there was actually a U.S. ship that needed a mascot, and that was Texas. So Jim came to live aboard Texas. Wow. And at some point, someone from Texas sent a card to Lloyd, who was still a little boy, saying with a picture of Jim so he would know that he got here safely. Wow. So I, I've always assumed that battleship mascots sort of just like showed up. It wasn't ever mm -hmm. put out as like a call of, hey, what ships need mascots on them? What do you need? So that's really interesting that, that Jim the first mascot of Battles of Texas showed up as as sort of like a requirement. Like it's, <laughs> the ship's crew wanted a mascot as opposed to just having a mascot. Right. Sometimes mascots were gifts. Okay. So Texaco actually gave the ship the first mascot, which was Ursa, a bear. They put a bear on yes. Battleship Texas? They did. Wow. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's not very practical. No, but, um, I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> there are some very cute pictures of sailors feeding this tiny little bear cub, but then the bear, as bears do, grew up. So what they tried to do was keep her in the brig, um, to sort Doesn't of keep sound her wise. no to keep her contained. <laughs> Ultimately, what they decided to do was, when she got big enough, they sent her off the ship to go. I believe they sent her to a zoo. Okay, so yeah. get a little bit more practical with Jim, the the mascot. Yeah, we also had a goat. Um, we've had other dogs. A goat. Yes, I like it. His name was his name was Patty. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's been, it's been a wide variety, but Jim is the most famous. He's actually featured in a late 1950s article of Reader's Digest. Really? Yes, an officer, because Jim was very popular with the officers. He didn't associate with the crew. Sure. He was kind of snobby. And so what he did was uh, there was an officer who loved Jim so much that he actually wrote an article later in his life and submitted it to the Reader's Digest about how much he loved this dog and how this dog was friendly to him. And if Jim didn't like certain officers, he would make it very clear to the officer by like going into his room and tearing things up. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. This is all great information. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for this honestly hilarious look into the history <laughs> of Texas. I never would have guessed that there was a bear aboard the ship ever. Okay. So thank you so much again. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, this has been Talking Ship. Good luck, fair seas, and I'll see you out there. Remember everybody, Battleship Texas needs your help. Yes, come visit her or go to our website, battleshiptexas.org, battleshiptexas.org.